Hi there, I'm Erin, and today we are going to be making roasted winter squash together. I really love roasted winter squash because it is, well, I think it's delicious, and you can adjust the seasonings and flavors however you like, so you can get lots of different flavor combinations, and um, it's just such a good food to have in the fall. And because they last so long, you can harvest them, and then you can still be using them like throughout November, December, January, sometimes even longer. And um, yeah, there's and all of them taste a little bit different. So I thought that first we would go over some different varieties that we have growing in the gardens. This is a little baby butternut. Isn't that cute? <laughs> this acorn squash. Look at those details. This beautiful Lakota squash. I love that reddish pink against the green. And there's some really big squashes out there like this sweet meat. Look at that. And this thing is pretty heavy. The sweet meat has a really thick flesh. So this is a lot of food. And this is what my family usually makes pumpkin pies out of because they're, um, yeah, they just have so much delicious squash in them. And let's see if you can see those beautiful scars there. Look at those details. They all, they all have so much character. Right, and uh, so I have already washed my hands. I have preheated my oven to 400 degrees. And um, I think that I will just do this little Lakota squash today. So when you're cutting something that's round, it's already awkward to cut, you want to have your sharpest knife available um, because the sharper it is, the smoother it will go in and we don't want any accidents. And if you're a young human, then you will probably want an adult to help you with this part or for them to do it for you. All right. So um, it's very tricky to um, cut through like either the end or the top, the flesh there or the skin and the flesh is very firm there. So I usually cut it at like kind of a <laughs> diagonal. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm gonna have to stand up a little bit to get some leverage. All right, so for this, I am going to use the bridge technique where um, I can have fingers on either side, and I'm gonna push down a little bit, but definitely don't wanna have fingers on either end, right? <laughs> so I'm going to hold there. I'm gonna kind of rock back and forth a little bit. Do a little pressing. Sometimes this takes a while. So you have to go out and then go back in again. Okay, that's a good sign, right? And sometimes after it's cut part way, I just see if I can pull it apart. I don't think I can pull this one apart quite yet. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Okay. Here we go. Look at that. Look at those lovely seeds in there. All right. So now I have a spoon here. I'm going to put the knife to the side. We're going to scoop out all those um, seeds and guts. And definitely don't throw them away. You could look up a recipe for roasted pumpkin seeds or if you have any animals that can eat pumpkin seeds. I'm sure that they would love them. Just gonna scoop out all of the soft stuff. Pumpkin seeds are a really delicious, easy one also. OK, 
Okay, save all those tasty treats. I'm gonna set those aside. I don't need them for this recipe. All right, and then I have my pan over here. I'm gonna set those off in there. And then we're gonna use some rosemary today. So I just picked this in one of the gardens and it's really delicious smelling, smelling and delicious tasting. <laughs> so we're gonna just strip off some of these leaves. I think that is plenty for the size of our squash. So now we're going to mince them and the mincing technique that we use to make sure that our fingers stay safe is you um, gather all of your items in one pile <laughs> And uh, the point of your knife always stays in the same spot. And then your other hand goes up top, just lays flat. And then you just rock down and you can move, move your hand back and forth, the, the one that's holding the knife, but the tip of the knife will just stay there. And you regather. And you just do that until it's all minced up into tiny sprinkleable pieces. Okay, that looks great to me. Okay, and now we're gonna bring our squash forward. And I just put this in a cast iron pan because that's what I'm using today. My squash isn't very big, so I don't need a bigger pan, but you can use a metal baking sheet, um, a tray, um, basically anything that can go in the oven, glass, whatever you like. Okay, and so I have my olive oil here, and I'm just gonna drizzle it over the top of all this. I love watching the oil like kind of run down into the into the valley of the squash. So sometimes I'll just pour around the top edge, just watch it go in. Yum. And then I'm going to dry off my fingers so I can sprinkle some salt. <laughs> Do a little sprinkle of that in each. Do some pepper. and then our rosemary. And uh, you can skip the rosemary if you don't like it. If you really love rosemary, you can do twice, as the, twice of the amount as I do. I'm just gonna do a nice couple heavy sprinkles. Oh yeah, I'm already so excited for this. All right, and that's it, easy peas. Um, so now it's going to go in the oven just like this. Um, and because all squash has different like thicknesses, it's going to all cook differently. So I'm just going to check it probably after 30 minutes and I'm gonna see what I see. You basically just want a fork to be able to easily slide into it. There shouldn't be any resistance. It should be like putting a fork through a, a piece of <laughs> bread or something. Um, so I'm gonna check in 30 and I'll see you guys back here when it's nice and soft. So it looks really good. This is what mine is looking like. Nice and caramely, caramelization around the top. And uh, because mine had thicker flesh, it took a little bit longer to cook. And so I checked it at 30 minutes and it really wasn't anywhere near um, soft, as soft as I wanted it to be. So I cooked it for close to an hour and you'll just have to keep testing it. Um, but this one I could tell was done because look, just the fork goes right into it. So let's see, I'm gonna try a bite right here. Mm. Tastes really good. The rosemary is really coming through. Um, remember that you can follow this recipe this time if you want to, but you can 
try all sorts of different things uh, the next time you cook it. Uh, you can do garlic, um, onions, paprika, cayenne, a drizzle of maple syrup or a sprinkle of brown sugar. You can put cinnamon on it, um, different uh, sweet spices, nutmeg. Um, yeah, so thanks for coming along with me while we make uh, roasted squash together and I'll see you next time. Bye.